Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I want to welcome you to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between horned, disbudded, or polled goats. So we actually have Nigerian goats. We actually have a pair of each. We have two that are horned, two that have been disbudded, and our new little babies have uh, that are pulled. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. So we've been doing some research on on what's what's you know number one what's really the difference what's the best what's the pros and the cons of you know keeping them horned getting them disbudded or if you get goats that are genetically pulled what's the what's the benefit of them so we're going to kind of run through each one and give you some pros and cons of what we found out hey and if you have any experiences we are pretty new at all this and um, we would love to hear what your experiences are and what what your uh, knowledge and research may have uh, uncovered. So, horn goats. So as I was saying, Marty and Maisie, they both have their horns. When we first got them, we weren't really uh, worried about if they had horns or not. They were kind of pets. So, and the people we got them from, that's what they prefer not, they prefer not to, to, to disbud their, their goats. Um, so we kind of went with that, being totally new. Now some of the some of the pros that we found out with having these is number one, there is no painful disbudding process. And it does help them regulate body temperature because there is blood flow through here. And actually in the in the wintertime, they're actually fairly warm. You can actually feel the heat on them. So now some of the cons is uh, goats with horns do have a, a an ability to get their head stuck in fences and other places. Now, I'm not saying that, that goats that don't have those don't get their head stuck, but it's probably more prevalent, especially as they get bigger and bigger, especially in the, in the bigger fences. They get stuck in there and they can't get them out. Another negative or, or con would be um, that they could rear up if you have a taller animal like horses or something like that, and it could puncture something underneath that animal or could hurt the humans that are trying to milk them since these are milk goats so far we haven't had any of those issues thank goodness and and uh actually now since they're getting a little bit bigger and they're kind of curving back i suspect that we probably won't uh hopefully we won't going forward uh, another con for a horned goat is they're not able to be shown so if you're in a person that that wants to show goats in like ffa or something similar to that at least you're in oklahoma and I don't know if it's like this every place, but these are not able to be shown because they have horns. So our disbudded goats right here is Spice, and this is Caramel. And they've actually been disbudded. And you can't really tell just by looking at up top, and no scars or anything like that. But what, what does disbudded mean? So when they're little babies, and I think this has to be done within the first two or three weeks of them being born. When they have little nubs up here, they actually go through and they actually disbud them. I think there's a little heat thing that they put on the the little horn area and it just burns it and it kills it. So it never grows. So kind of painful for the little ones, but they do recover very quickly. And But some people do not like to do that because it hurts. So one of the things that we worried about bringing these ladies home... Well, since they don't have horns and our other two did, um, would there be any issues of them butting heads and getting hurt? And so far, we haven't had anything. These ladies are, are, are larger than ours and more mature. So there's definitely been some head butting, but it, we haven't had any issues with it, thank goodness. Now, some of the pros for, for getting your, your goats disbudded is no worries about injury from horns used on animals or other people. They can be shown. The cons is actually just completing the disbudding uh, without injury or leaving scurs, which scurs is kind of a, a place where it didn't completely get all of that that horn bed. And so as they grow, there's a little little bit of a horn that, that comes up that can fall off and bleed, and, and it's called a scur. All right, and our new little boys here, these are actually pulled. <laughs> They're both in my lap now. 
which means that they don't have any horns coming up. Now, they do have little spikes up underneath their, their hair, but from what we've read, they are not going to grow. So the pole goats actually get that trait from, from, from their, either their mom or dad. It's a, it's a genetic trait. Because one of their mom or dad had to be polled. And their offsprings has the potential to being polled. Now, since these guys will be bred with our horned goats or goats that were disputed. So we have a, sorry, <laughs> distracted here. Since these guys will be bred with our horned and our disputed females, uh, we'll have a chance to have either a, a horned or a pulled goat. Not for sure yet. Now there, now there is some discussion that we've read about that the pole goats have a higher risk of being sterile. Unfortunately, though, the only thing that we found about this, there was a report that came out in the 1940s, and we haven't seen anything definite since then. So if you have any good links of research on this, we'd love to see it in your comments, or if you have any information about it. We haven't found it, and we've kind of read some mixed theories about this article if it's factual or not i mean it was made in the 1940s but some of the pros for having polled goats is of course they're all the same as the ones that are disputed plus the the major one i think is there's no pain or risk for having them disputed you don't have to worry about that uh, i know that i would not want to have to go through the process of of debutting a goat Especially since I've never done it, never seen it done, and yeah, I think it'd just be hard uh, hurting your little babies. The con is, if it's true, then possibly there is a risk for for them to be sterile. So which one do we prefer? Well, you know, we don't know yet. You know, we're we're all new to this goating uh, environment that we have. Uh, we've only had goats for for less than a year, and and. You know, we've kind of gained them as we went along here. So we don't know yet. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys what your experience has. If you've had all three or, or one or the other and, and kind of know uh, and just kind of know what your experience are. So we will definitely be able to tell you more as we go along with with having goats and especially as we start breeding them and and uh, seeing how everything turns out with the little babies and and their mamas and and all that kind of stuff. But for now. We're just enjoying having these little babies and, and the goats that we do have. But I think it's great information. And uh, hopefully next year we may be able to do a, a, a number two video of this and just be able to tell you a little bit more of what we find out. So, hey guys, if you like our channel, if you like these type of videos, give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, hey, click on that little subscribe button right down there. Kick that notification bell so you get notified that a new video is coming out. And again, we just really appreciate you guys coming and watching it. If you made it this far, thank you a bunch. We do appreciate it. And from the Rock and Sea Homestead, that's Huck. This is Finn. And this is Lance. And we'll catch you on the next video.